gathered friends, listen again to the legend of the Bionicle. In the time before time, Nintendo descended from the heavens, bringing the Game Boy Advance to this paradise. We were divided and without games, so the Great Spirit illuminated us with a bunch of cool fucking games. Kirby, Pokemon, and Mario. We embraced these games, and in gratitude, we all bought GBAs and played them. But our happiness was not to last. For the LEGO company saw how these games performed and brought their own games to the platform. And with Nintendo's approval, the LEGO company was free to unleash their games. And unleash them, they did. So as you may have gathered from the intro, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of Bionicle games on the Game Boy Advance. The first one we're looking at is Bionicle Matoran Adventures. And you know what? It's a pretty weird game. Well, it's not that weird, it's just a 2D platformer, but the concept of the game baffles me. For you not familiar with the Bionicle lore, Matoran are the normal everyday citizens on Mata Nui. So basically the title is equivalent to Bionicle Civilian Adventure. Who thought this was a good idea? I want to play as the Toa! You have all these colorful heroes, but they aren't even in the game. That's like making a Power Rangers game, but instead of playing as the Power Rangers, you play as some little kid and an old guy. I just don't really know who would want to play as these Matoran, unless you really want to play as the character you got in your McDonald's Happy Meal. That being said, even that's disappointing. You can find new masks to play as all the different Matoran and levels, but all it does is change the color of your character. Not even the sprite, even though you're picking up the pieces of their actual mask. It's honestly a bit of an odd concept too. I'm pretty sure all of the Matoran are different races, so the equivalent in human terms is basically picking up four divided pieces of face meat so you can play as a black guy. None of the Matoran have different powers, so there isn't really any point to playing as a different one. They all just look like the red one, but with a different color palette. Same with your Turaga partner. They all just look like the blue one, but in different colors. Actually, the sprites in the game are a bit weird in general. On the one hand, I can look at most of them and say, yep, that's what that looks like. But on the other hand, I wouldn't say they look very good, especially the game's bosses. They definitely look like the sets, but there's just something off about them. They're so lifeless. So while they are recognizable, they just don't look good. They look amateurish, like this was someone's first time making sprites and they just made the most literal interpretation of the set they could. It's a bit hard to describe, but just think of it like Sonic. You know it's supposed to be Sonic, and your brain recognizes it as Sonic, but it's not really Sonic. This game is surprisingly difficult, but for all the wrong reasons. You know those creepy pastas about cursed game cartridges? That's really the best way I can describe this game. The camera shakes uncontrollably while jumping. Sometimes your character gets hit by projectiles that clearly missed you. And sometimes just walking can make it feel like something's wrong. It feels like a game that doesn't want you to play it. Plus, there's some bizarre decisions made here. Like, there's fall damage in the game? Why? For what reason would you put fall damage in a game with the world's worst camera? It feels so random too. Like, this is okay. But this isn't, even though there's barely any difference. It can be pretty hard to judge whether something is going to hurt you or not because of this. Plus, it just makes the platforming in the game that much more frustrating. The camera in this game is so weird. It does this thing where it tries to focus on both of your characters at the same time. So you're both jumping and it can move pretty erratically since your jumping is maybe half a second desync. Other times it'll focus on objects in the scene so you just have to run blind. Like here with this boulder. I have basically a centimeter of the screen I can see ahead of me. So there's really nothing I can do but run into things. And honestly, don't even get me started on the bottomless pits. They're relentless in this game, and sometimes it's hard to tell what's bottomless and what isn't till you fall in, especially in the ice level. Plus, one of the worst things this game does is save how many lives you have at the end of each level. So if you finish a level on your last life and you start the next one, that's all you get. Even if you game over, which I did many times, an embarrassingly large amount of times honestly, for what I would presume is supposed to be a kid's game. You know the game is bad when the water level is the best and least frustrating one. 
One thing I find funny about the game is once you beat it, instead of starting the game right before the final boss like a lot of games do that don't have a post game or new game plus, this one just starts you at the congratulations screen. So, you know, if you ever want that rush of seeing the end screen of a game, you can always just flip this one on for that thrill. Oh, and what a thrill it is. But I never actually played that game as a kid, so on the bright side, it never ruined my childhood. But this one might have. Bionicle on the GBA. Now, this is one of the worst games I've ever played, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. It was absolute torture to bring myself to play this for this review. But you know what? My YouTube audience has theoretically been clamoring for me to play these games. I, I, someone asked me, so, uh, theoretically if I had an audience, someone would have asked me. So, uh, you know, I, I had to do it. I had to do it for the, the YouTube people who love my videos and definitely subscribe and maybe even follow me on Twitter for updates. And, uh, you know, you can, you can ask me to play more of these games because there's even more Bionicle games out there. Think about it. Think about it. It's a good deal. It's a good deal for you. But anyway, let's get into the game. Ugh. Oh, I just can't. I can't do it. Oh, God. I don't know when. Initial impressions of this game are actually not too bad. If I didn't know better, I would probably be impressed. I wouldn't normally mention something like the menu music unless it was something really special, and in this case, it actually is. It's lived in my head rent-free for the better part of my life, and even now I can still sing the main part while not having played this game for something like 15 years. I mean, just listen to this! Oh, by the way, it doesn't get any better than this. This is the best part of the game. Actually, while I'm on the topic of music, it's pretty good in this game. There aren't many songs in total, but what's here is good. At least the composer wasn't slacking. Even the graphics aren't too bad at first glance. The game goes for a 3D isometric style, which is actually kind of unique for Game Boy. Not saying there's no other games like this, but it wasn't exactly extremely common, and the graphics are generally pretty appealing. You can even start the game as any toy you want, which is cool. And you know what? After the last game, it's great to be able to even just play as the Toei. My favorite was always Leap, so I would probably just start there. That's even where the Toa Select starts, so it seems like a good a place as any. All right, so I was thinking of putting a bit here where I struggle with my controller settings and go, oh, there must be something wrong. My D-pad is broken. I'm going in the wrong directions. But le you know what? Let's not beat around the bush here. The number one issue with this game is the horrible controls. You ever been hit with an item in a game that reverses your controls? That's what playing this entire game is like. This is what it looks like when you press up. Yeah, you go up and right. And yeah, every other direction is similarly confusing. Down not only goes down, but also left. Right goes right and down. Left goes up and left. If you want to go directly up or down, you have to press a diagonal direction. It's really bizarre and confusing. If you've played literally any other 3D game before this, then you're going to have a hard time and it's going to be difficult to adapt. When I was a kid, I used to turn my Game Boy on an angle and play to try and make my brain remember, and even then I still had trouble with it. And honestly, the controls being bad wouldn't be such a huge issue, except for all the other issues that compound with it. This game really makes you feel like you have one eye. One of the other big issues with this game is there's no sense of depth on anything. Whether something is close or far away, it's still rendered the same size. So basically, if there's no shadow on the ground, it's impossible to judge where something is. I don't think I've ever played a game where I've been so consistently confused about why I've missed jumps. Most jumps in this game would take me two or three times to land, and some even more. Some I'm still confused on where they're actually supposed to be. There's a few jumps in Onua's level specifically that just suck. Like here, it looks like the platform moves down, but it's actually moving on the X and Z axis, which I found out with a lucky jump. And this one here, where I got made fun of on stream for constantly missing. Shut up, dude. Oh yeah, and uh, go go subscribe to the Twitch. There's a there's a uh, link in the description below. Here, this is my shameless Twitch plug. 
Oh yeah, and you know what? This wasn't even my first time in this room, so that's probably saying something. I already lost five lives here and got a game over, so, you know, that's really saying something. Oh, and if you're in the same room and you stand near the door, the door actually appears to be on top of Onua. This makes me think the game isn't some true 3D and is more of an optical illusion, which makes sense with how confusing it is. And maybe, you know what? Maybe it's not even supposed to be a 3D platform. Because honestly, this game strikes me as more of a non-Euclidean platformer, where the dimensions are made up and the lives don't matter. Wait, that's wrong. The lives actually matter a lot. And that's the third main tenant for the trinity of bullshit that makes up this game. For a game that's pretty demonstrably for kids, this game is hard as shit. You get five lives to complete each level, and you can find more, but they really don't amount to much when instant death pits and spikes are everywhere. Every room has a chance to be the one room with incomprehensible platforming that can take every life you have. And it's not even just the instant death ones that are deadly, but the average platforming in this game is tough too, because this game has more fucking fall damage. And you take a lot of damage too. It's really easy to lose every life you have trying to navigate these levels, especially with just how bad the controls are and how non-existent depth perception is. Every problem I've already talked about just compounds to make a frustrating and unnecessarily difficult experience. The only things that aren't hard are just the normal enemies and bosses. Just stand back and spam your attack until they die. Now, once you familiarize yourself with the levels, they are doable, but the game involves a lot of trial and error. You end up playing the same levels multiple times just to figure them out, which is a pain. Of course, you'll have to play them multiple times anyway, because the game requires you to beat each level twice. Once is the regular Toa, and once is the Toa Nuba. The game is broken into two halves, basically. One where you play as the Toa, and one where you play as the Toa Nuva. So you'd think it would be 12 levels total, but no, it's actually six. You play the same levels as the Toa Nuva as the regular Toa, completely unchanged. The only difference is that the Toa Nuva can jump a little bit higher, so there are some areas that they can access that the regular Toa can't. There are a few more differences, but it basically boils down to being able to move bigger rocks. There's no difference in combat abilities, health, or anything that would affect the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. You unlock a final level with Takanuva where you fight the final boss, Makuta, and it's kinda neat because he has all the Toa's abilities, but the only ones you need to use are Galley's Wall Jump and Liwa's Glock. And also this level is literally just two rooms, one with a bit of platforming in the boss. It's literally two wall jumps and a glide away from being at the boss. I don't know why they even included this room, it feels unfinished, like there was supposed to be more level. There are other issues I have with the game as well. For example, I said it was cool earlier that you could pick any Toa, but the levels are not the same difficulty at all. It seems like there might be an order of easiest to hardest starting from the left and moving to the right, but the game never tells you that, so you would never know unless you play them all first. The game could really benefit from making one of the levels a tutorial or having a suggested order. There are hints in the levels, but none of them ever tell you anything important, like hold L to lock onto enemies, which I never knew as a kid, that would have been helpful. I was at a hell of a time trying to hit enemies. Most of the hints are like, you go up to them and Takua goes, oh, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, can you swim? I mean, I don't know, Takua, can I swim? I thought you were supposed to be telling me that. As it turns out, you can. But why does the game have to be so fucking cryptic? It's beyond me, just tell me, dude. Like, it's not a- it's not a goddamn secret! It's literally an essential ability! I need to beat the game! I really can't express adequately just how much I hate these games. Why can't Bionicle get any good games? You'd think it would be such a ripe and rich world to build games within. Or, you know, if you didn't want to go for such an ambitious route, you could just do, like, a beat-em-up or a fighting game, you got these six characters with unique weapons, but it's like, no. No, this is what you get. You get one of the worst 2D platformers and one of the worst 3D platformers I've ever seen. <sighs> it's really depressing. But, you know, Bionicle, it just got revived. Lego's bringing it back. Maybe we're gonna get some good games. Let's take a look at one of the sets. I'm sure it's gonna be awesome. What the fuck? So, you know, if you ever want that feeling of that rush you get when you beat a game, you can always just flip this on one for that thrill.